Corno competition is an economic model used to describe an industry structure in which companies compete on the amount of output they will produce, which they decide on independently of each other and at the same time. It is named after Antoine Augustin Corneau (1801–1877), who was inspired by observing competition in a spring water duopoly. It has the following features. There is more than one firm and all firms produce a homogeneous product, i.e. there is no product differentiation. Firms do not cooperate, i.e. there is no collusion. Firms have market power, i.e. each firm's output decision affects the goods price. The number of firms is fixed. Firms compete in quantities, and choose quantities simultaneously. The firms are economically rational and act strategically, usually seeking to maximize profit given their competitors' decisions. An essential assumption of this model is the not conjecture that each firm aims to maximize profits, based on the expectation that its own output decision will not have an effect on the decisions of its rivals. Price is a commonly known decreasing function of total output. All firms know n n the total number of firms in the market, and take the output of the others as given. Each firm has a cost function c i q i display style c underscore i q underscore i. Normally the cost functions are treated as common knowledge. The cost functions may be the same or different among firms. The market price is set at a level such that demand equals the total quantity produced by all firms. Each firm takes the quantity set by its competitors as a given, evaluates its residual demand, and then behaves as a monopoly. Topic: History. Antoine Augustin Cournot (1801–1877) first outlined his theory of competition in his 1838 volume *Recherches sur les principes mathématiques de la théorie des richesses* as a way of describing the competition with a market for spring water dominated by two suppliers, a duopoly. The model was one of a number that Cournot set out, "...explicitly and with mathematical precision," in the volume. Specifically, Cournot constructed profit functions for each firm, and then used partial differentiation to construct a function representing a firm's best response for given exogenous output levels of the other firms in the market. He then showed that a stable equilibrium occurs where these functions intersect i.e. the simultaneous solution of the best response functions of each firm. The consequence of this is that in equilibrium, each firm's expectations of how other firms will act are shown to be correct. When all is revealed, no firm wants to change its output decision. This idea of stability was later taken up and built upon as a description of Nash equilibria, of which Cournot equilibria are a subset. Graphically finding the Cournot duopoly equilibrium This section presents an analysis of the model with two firms and constant marginal cost. P 1 display style P underscore 1 equals firm 1 price P 2 display style P underscore 2 equals firm 2 price Q 1 display style q underscore 1 equals firm 1 quantity q 2 display style q underscore 2 equals firm 2 quantity 
C display style C equals marginal cost identical for both firm equilibrium prices will be P 1 equals P 2 equals P Q 1 plus Q 2 Display style P underscore one equals P underscore two equals P Q underscore one plus Q underscore two. This implies that firm one's profit is given by Pi one equals Q one P Q one plus Q two minus C display style pi underscore one equals Q underscore one P Q underscore one plus Q underscore two C calc Ulit firm one's residual demand. Suppose firm one believes firm two is producing quantity Q two display style q underscore 2 what is firm 1's optimal quantity consider the diagram 1 if firm 1 decides not to produce anything then price is given by p 0 plus q 2 equals p q 2 Display style p zero plus q underscore two equals p q underscore two. If firm one produces q one, display style q underscore one, then price is given by p q one plus q two. Display style p q underscore one plus q underscore two. More generally, for each quantity that firm one might decide to set, price is given by the curve d one q two. Display style d underscore one q underscore two. The curve d. One Q two Display style D underscore one Q underscore two is called firm one's residual demand. It gives all possible combinations of firm one's quantity and price for a given value of Q two Display style Q underscore two determine firm 1's optimum output to do this we must find where marginal revenue equals marginal cost marginal cost c is assumed to be constant marginal revenue is a curve r 1 q 2 display style r underscore 1 q underscore 2 with twice the slope of D one Q two Display style D underscore one Q underscore two and with the same vertical intercept. The point at which the two curves C Display style C and R one Q Two display style r underscore one q underscore two intersect corresponds to quantity q one q two display style q underscore one q underscore two firm one's optimum q 
1 q 2 display style q underscore 1 q underscore 2 depends on what it believes firm 2 is doing to find an equilibrium we derive firm 1's optimum for other possible values of q 2 display style q underscore 2 diagram 2 considers two possible values of q 2 display style q underscore 2 if q 2 equals 0 display style q underscore 2 equals 0 then the first firm's residual demand is effectively the market demand d 1 0 equals d display style d underscore 1 0 equals d the optimal solution is for firm 1 to choose the monopoly quantity q 1 0 equals q m display style q underscore 1 0 equals q caret m q m display style q caret m is monopoly quantity if firm 2 were to choose the quantity corresponding to perfect competition q 2 equals q c display style q underscore 2 equals q caret c such that p q c equals c display style p q caret c equals c then firm 1's optimum would be to produce nil q 1 q c equals 0 display style q underscore 1 q caret c equals 0 this is the point at which marginal cost intercepts the marginal revenue corresponding to d 1 q c display style d underscore 1 q caret c it can be shown that given the linear demand and constant marginal cost the function q 1 q 2 display style q underscore 1 q underscore 2 is also linear because we have two points we can draw the entire function q 1 q 2 display style q underscore 1 q underscore 2 see diagram 3 note the axis of the graphs has changed the function q 1 Q two Display style Q underscore one Q underscore two is firm one's reaction function. It gives firm one's optimal choice for each possible choice by firm two. In other words, it gives firm one's choice given what it believes firm two is doing. The last stage in finding the Cournot equilibrium is to find firm 2's reaction function. In this case it is symmetrical to firm 1's as they have the same cost function. The equilibrium is the intersection point of the reaction curves. See Diagram 4. The prediction of the model is that the firms will choose Nash equilibrium output levels. Topic. Calculating the equilibrium 
In very general terms, let the price function for the duopoly industry be P Q one plus Q two Display style P Q underscore one plus Q underscore two and firm I Display style I have the cost structure C I Q I display style C underscore I Q underscore I to calculate the Nash equilibrium the best response functions of the firms must first be calculated the profit of firm I is revenue minus cost Revenue is the product of price and quantity and cost is given by the firm's cost function, so profit is as described above, pi i equals p q 1 plus q 2 q i minus C I Q I display style pi underscore I equals P Q underscore one plus Q underscore two C D O T Q underscore I C underscore I Q underscore I. The best response is to find the value of Q I. Display style q underscore i that maximizes pi i display style pi underscore i given q j display style q underscore j with i does not equal j Display style i n e q j, i e given some output of the opponent firm, the output that maximizes profit is found. Hence, the maximum of pi i display style pi underscore i with respect to q i display style q underscore i is to be found. First take the derivative of pi i display style pi underscore i with respect to q i display style q underscore i pi i q i equals P Q one plus Q two Q I Q I plus P Q one plus Q two Minus C I Q I Q I display style frac partial pi underscore i partial q underscore i equals frac partial p q underscore one plus q underscore two partial q underscore i c d o t q underscore i plus p q underscore one plus q underscore two frac partial c underscore i q underscore i partial q underscore i Setting this to zero for maximization, pi i q i equals p q one plus q two q 
Q I Q I plus P Q one plus Q two minus C I Q I Q I equals zero Display style FRAC partial pi underscore I partial Q underscore I equals FRAC partial P Q underscore one plus Q underscore two partial Q underscore I C D O T Q underscore I plus P Q underscore one plus Q underscore two FRAC partial C underscore I Q underscore I partial Q underscore I equals zero the values of q i display style q underscore i that satisfy this equation are the best responses the nash equilibria are where both q 1 display style q underscore 1 and q 2 Display style q underscore two are best responses given those values of q one. Display style q underscore one and q two. Display style q underscore two. Topic. An example. Suppose the industry has the following price structure P Q one plus Q two equals a minus Q one plus Q two display style p q underscore one plus q underscore two equals a q underscore one plus q underscore two. The profit of firm I display style I with cost structure C I Q I Display style c underscore i q underscore i such that two c i q i q i two equals zero Display style FRAC partial carrot two C underscore I Q underscore I partial Q underscore I carrot two equals zero and C I Q I Q J equals zero J does not equal I display style frac partial c underscore i q underscore i partial q underscore j equals zero j n e q i for ease of computation is pi i equals a minus q one plus Q two Q I minus C I Q I 
Display style pi underscore i equals big a q underscore one plus q underscore two big c d o t q underscore i c underscore i q underscore i. The maximization problem resolves to from the general case a minus q one plus Q two Q I Q I plus a minus Q one plus Q two minus C I Q I Q I equals zero Display style FRAC partial big A Q underscore one plus Q underscore two big partial Q underscore I C D O T Q underscore I plus A Q underscore one plus Q underscore two FRAC partial C underscore I Q underscore I partial Q underscore I equals zero Without loss of generality, consider firm one's problem. Minus Q one plus Q two Q one Q one plus a minus Q one plus Q two Minus C one Q one Q one equals zero Display style FRAC partial big A Q underscore one plus Q underscore two big partial Q underscore one C D O T Q underscore one plus A Q underscore one plus Q underscore two FRAC partial C underscore one Q underscore one partial Q underscore one equals zero minus Q one plus a minus q one plus q two minus c one q one q one equals Zero Display style right arrow Q underscore one plus A Q underscore one plus Q underscore two FRAC partial C underscore one Q underscore one partial Q underscore one equals zero Q one equals a minus Q two Minus C one Q one Q one two Display style right arrow Q underscore one equals FRAC A Q underscore two FRAC partial C underscore one Q underscore one partial Q underscore one two by symmetry q 2 equals a minus q 1 minus c 2 q 2 q 2 2 
Display style right arrow q underscore two equals frac a q underscore one frac partial c underscore two q underscore two partial q underscore two two. These are the firm's best response functions. For any value of q two display style q underscore two. Firm one responds best with any value of q one display style q underscore one that satisfies the above. In Nash equilibria, both firms will be playing best responses, so solving the above equations simultaneously, substituting for q two. Display style q underscore two in firm one's best response q one equals a minus a minus q one minus c two q two Q two two minus C one Q one Q one two Display style Q underscore one equals FRAC a left FRAC a Q underscore one FRAC partial C underscore two Q underscore two partial Q underscore two two right FRAC partial C underscore one Q underscore one partial Q underscore one two Q one equals Plus C two Q two Q two minus two C one Q one Q one three Display style right arrow q underscore one carrot asterisk equals frac a plus frac partial c underscore two q underscore two partial q underscore two minus two asterisk frac partial c underscore one q underscore one partial q underscore one three q two equals a plus c 1 q 1 q 1 minus 2 c 2 q 2 q 2 Three display style right arrow q underscore two carrot asterisk equals frac a plus frac partial c underscore one q underscore one partial q underscore one minus two asterisk frac partial c underscore two q underscore two partial q underscore two three. The symmetric Nash equilibrium is at Q one Q two Displaced tile Q underscore one carrot asterisk Q underscore two carrot asterisk Making suitable assumptions for the partial derivatives, for example, assuming each firm's cost is a linear function of quantity and thus using the slope of that function in the calculation, the equilibrium quantities can be substituted in the assumed industry price structure P Q 1 
plus q two equals a minus q one plus q two Display style p q underscore one plus q underscore two equals a q underscore one plus q underscore two to obtain the equilibrium market price. Topic: Corno competition with many firms and the Corno theorem. For an arbitrary number of firms, n greater than one, display style n greater than one, the quantities and price can be derived in a manner analogous to that given above, with linear demand and identical constant marginal cost. The equilibrium values are as follows: market demand p Q equals a minus b q equals a minus b q equals p q Display style P Q equals a B Q equals a B Q equals P Q cost function C I Q I equals C Q I Display style C underscore I Q underscore I equals C Q underscore I for all I Q I equals Q N equals A minus C B N plus one display style q underscore i equals q n equals frac a c b n plus one, which is each individual firm's output. Q i equals n q equals n a minus c b n plus 1 display style sum q underscore i equals n q equals frac n a c b n plus 1 which is total industry output p equals a minus B N Q equals a plus N C N plus one Display style P equals A B N Q equals F R A C A plus N C N plus one which is the market clearing price and pi i equals a minus c n plus 1 2 1 b Display style pi underscore i equals left frac a c n plus one right carrot two left frac one b right, 
which is each individual firm's profit. The Cournot theorem then states that, in absence of fixed costs of production, as the number of firms in the market, n, goes to infinity, market output, nq, goes to the competitive level and the price converges to marginal cost. Lim n infinity p equals c display style lim underscore n right arrow in a t p equals c hence with many firms a corno market approximates a perfectly competitive market this result can be generalized to the case of firms with different cost structures under appropriate restrictions and nonlinear demand. When the market is characterized by fixed costs of production, however, we can endogenize the number of competitors imagining that firms enter in the market until their profits are zero. In our linear example with n firms when fixed costs for each firm are f display style f we have the endogenous number of firms n equals a minus c f b minus 1 Display style n equals frac ac sqrt f flat minus one, and a production for each firm equal to q equals f b b. Display style q equals frac sqrt f flat b. This equilibrium is usually known as Cournot equilibrium with endogenous entry, or Marshall equilibrium. Topic: <laughs> Implications. Output is greater with Cournot duopoly than monopoly, but lower than perfect competition. Price is lower with Cournot duopoly than monopoly, but not as low as with perfect competition. According to this model the firms have an incentive to form a cartel, effectively turning the Cournot model into a monopoly. Cartels are usually illegal, so firms might instead tacitly collude using self-imposing strategies to reduce output which, ceteris paribus will raise the price and thus increase profits for all firms involved. <laughs> Bertrand versus Cournot Although both models have similar assumptions, they have very different implications. Since the Bertrand model assumes that firms compete on price and not output quantity, it predicts that a duopoly is enough to push prices down to marginal cost level, meaning that a duopoly will result in perfect competition. Neither model is necessarily better. The accuracy of the predictions of each model will vary from industry to industry, depending on the closeness of each model to the industry situation. If capacity and output can be easily changed, Bertrand is a better model of duopoly competition. If output and capacity are difficult to adjust, then Cournot is generally a better model. Under some conditions the Cournot model can be recast as a two-stage model, where in the first stage firms choose capacities, and in the second they compete in Bertrand fashion, however, as the number of firms increases towards infinity, the Cournot model gives the same result as in Bertrand model, the market price is pushed to marginal cost level. See also Aggregative game Bertrand competition Bertrand Edgeworth model Conjectural variation Game theory 
Nash equilibrium Stackelberg competition Tacit collusion